Hey guys, this is Theojo Tech. If you've ever gone to buy a memory card, you probably saw some sort of speed marking on it, whether it said something like 2000X or UHS-1 or Class 10, or maybe you've heard of these, but you didn't exactly know what they mean. That's exactly what this video is gonna be about because a lot of times it's way more complicated than it needs to be, so I'm gonna explain it in simple terms, hopefully. So first, let's get into SD cards. Now, SD cards have ratings that describe the minimum read and write speed of the memory card in terms of megabytes per second. And there are two tiers of speeds. The first one is the regular class description, which is class two, class four, six, and 10. And then there's an upper tier UHS, which stands for ultra high speed. And this is gonna be either UHS one or UHS three. And for the regular tier, the class number just describes the number of megabytes a second it can read and write minimum. So class two is two megabytes a second, class four is four megabytes a second, all the way up to class 10, which is a minimum of 10 megabytes a second read and write. Now there is a distinction for the class two, four, and six. Those ratings actually describe the minimum speed even if the card is fragmented and full. So even in a worst case scenario, you'll still get those speeds. But for class 10, that 10 megabytes a second rating is pretty much only if the card is in a non-fragmented state. So it's like a best case scenario. So in some cases for a class 10 card, you might get slightly lower than the 10 megabytes a second minimum. And usually the computer will warn you if the speed is behaving lower than it should be on a class 10 card. Now let's move on to the UHS tier, ultra high speed. These numbers are basically representing a multiple of 10 megabytes per second for the minimum read and write speed. So for example, UHS one is also minimum of 10 megabytes a second and UHS three is minimum of 30 megabytes per second. So you're probably wondering what's the difference between a class 10 and UHS one. Well, there really isn't any practically, you're still going to get the minimum of 10 megabytes a second. The only difference is that UHS cards use a different bus interface that's slightly faster and is capable of higher transfer speeds, but that won't affect the performance of the individual card. It just shows you basically what the maximum speed any card could go to using that interface. So you can see on this chart that any type of card may use a regular bus interface, but it, some of them use high speed interfaces. Now don't get confused with the UHS-1 and UHS-2 interfaces here. The Roman numerals are actually referring to the bus interface, not the card speed ratings in this case. So you can see that normal regular speed are capable of 12.5 megabytes a second. High speed is 25 megabytes a second. However, if it's either of the UHS interfaces, it will be faster than the non-UHS interfaces. So the UHS-1 interface is capable of at least 50 megabytes a second, and UHS-2 is capable of at least 150 megabytes per second. And again, those are just the speeds of the interfaces, which describe what cards can take advantage of maximum, but for the actual speeds of the cards, you have to look at the speed ratings. So you're probably thinking this sounds like a big mess. Well, let me simplify it. UHS-1 and 2, the Roman numerals, describe the speeds of the interfaces, what cards can take advantage of if they're sufficiently fast. But the UHS rating or the class rating actually describes the speed of the card itself. So that's really all you care about because that describes how much performance you're gonna get out of the card and you really never have to worry about the speed of the bus interface. The only exception would be if you're using a very fast SD card, like one that's capable of over 150 megabytes a second, then you wanna make sure that your card reader has the fastest UHS interface, and that's really the only time it would apply, but it's still something to be aware of. Now let's get to the X speed rating. You've probably seen something that says 500X, 1000X, but what exactly does that mean? Well, this rating, in my opinion, is the dumbest of them all because it's based on the read and write speeds of compact discs, yes, old CD-ROMs. And in this case, the number before the X is how many times you multiply 150 kibibytes per second towards that number to get the final speed of the card. Yes, I said kibibytes, not gonna get into the difference between kilobytes, but you can kind of think of them as the same thing for this purpose. So basically to get the speed of the card, you have to do a bunch of math. You have to multiply 150 times 500 or whatever numbers in front of it, then convert that to megabytes a second. It's just a pain. And you'll actually see this system used on CDs, printed on CDs. It'll say 48X or 18X, 
That's what that's referring to. It's the same system, and I don't know why they implemented this on SD cards, because no one seems to know what it even means. So let's do an example to demonstrate how dumb this system is. If you had a 600X rating card, you would multiply that by 150 Kibby bytes. That gives you a certain number of Kibby bytes, which you have to convert to megabytes, which then gives you about 90 megabytes per second, which you would have no idea of knowing if you didn't do the math. And if that didn't sound dumb enough, there's another reason why this system is extremely annoying, because that 600x or whatever speed is the maximum. It's not even a guaranteed, it's what it could go up to. So you have to consider it probably won't get up to that speed. And on top of that, manufacturers don't usually specify whether they're giving that rating in read or write speed. So usually they'll put read speed because it's faster. So you might go and say, all right, this is a 90 megabytes a second card and then the write speed ends up only being 60 or something like that. So you really have to do your own research when you have a card that's only labeled with the X rating or it doesn't tell you whether the speed rating is in read or write speed. Now fortunately the class ratings which are more simple and guaranteed speeds are the standard for SD cards so that's usually what you'll see even if it's labeled with an X rating, you'll usually see the class rating in addition to it. So definitely look for cards with a guaranteed class rating. And at least now if you see a X rating, you know what it means, but you should still look up on the back of the product or whatever if there's a guaranteed read and write speed and what those are. And definitely do your research because you might read that people say this doesn't go as fast as it should. So it's something to be aware of. And that's pretty much it. I'm sure you guys didn't think that memory card speeds could get so convoluted, but I hope I was able to explain it in a way that made sense so that now going forward, you won't be so you know annoyed trying to figure out what the ratings mean. So if you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up so I know you guys enjoyed it and found it helpful. And if you wanna leave a comment for what you guys thought, I'm definitely interested in hearing that. And if you wanna continue watching, I've got some other videos on the right hand side that you can either click on or look in the description for the same link, like if you're on a phone. And if you wanna subscribe, I make new videos three times a week, so I definitely think it should be worth it. I look forward to hearing from your feedback, either in the comments section or on Twitter, I'm there as well. So thanks for watching, guys. I will see you next time. Have a good one.